because motherhood and stress are not synonymous. Stress does not have to be the dominant factor in my motherhood journey. These are things that I tell myself. (laughs) These are things that I tell myself because the truth is children are a gift from the Lord. These kids belong to him. I am simply raising them up in the way that they should go towards him to my best ability until they are grown and they make their own choices and they do their own thing. That's it. I have to release the the habit in me to want to control everything and hold them not so tightly but loose enough for God to parent with me, for the Holy Spirit to parent with me so that I can be a mom that exhibits joy and peace and comfort and patience. So my children grow up feeling like patience is synonymous with motherhood, that joy is synonymous with motherhood. Those are the beliefs that I want to instill in them. And those are the beliefs that I want to instill in me. Riches, top ramen place versus five star dinners. Wonder why I fit it. The humblest beginnings had to take some losses before I saw my first winnings. Silver line grinning, poverty line thinning. My life is like a moving in the plot, just thickened. Came from broken homes, trying to break the old traditions. Left my old ways for my future acquisitions. I know, no such thing as playing both sides. I know, life is better in the dope ride. I know. The water better in the low tide Music better amplified Staying down for upsides I know No such thing as playing both sides I know The life is better in the dope ride I know The water better in the low tide Music better amplified Staying down for upsides I know never talked about this with y'all and I really haven't talked about it on social media at all but it's something that I wanted to share and chat with you about because I feel like a lot of people in the body of Christ are feeling different types of ways about the way church culture operates and how being a part of a local church and going to a building and being a part of a ministry and going to a mega church or a small church, whatever. Everybody has like feelings about all these things versus like, you know, watching sermons online and all that kind of stuff. Like people have their opinions about, you know, what that should look like for you. So I wanted to just share what it looks like for us. What does church look like for us? And for us, our church is our home. My husband leads us spiritually. So we do Bible studies weekly and we study really not on a specific day, even though my husband just started us doing Sunday teachings as a family all together, including my younger sister, because she lives with us, Madison, who you saw a lot of in the vlog so far, but doing just studies together, 
We also host like our friends who we call our community uh, over at our house a lot, at least once a month, if not more than that, depending on what's going on. But we really utilize our home as our church. So we don't go to an actual church building every Sunday. That's not how we do church. We don't have like a spiritual covering, if that makes sense, as far as like a pastor that covers us in that kind of traditional way. But we do have, I would say, older or elder men of faith who we go to for counsel that we go to for spiritual understanding especially my husband like he talks to older men all the time that are walking and doing life with him with us our families all that sorts of thing so it's not as if we're just doing bible by ourselves and kind of like not talking to other people which i think is a trick of the enemy to like think make you think that your relationship with God or your relationship with with Christ is just about you, which is a spirit of isolation. And that's not what God has called us to. God calls us to people like God calls us to his other kids. And how can you do that if you are isolated in your relationship? Now, granted, you can be isolated for a time, depending on where you are in your walk, especially if you're walking out of a lifestyle that doesn't support who God has called you to be. And doesn't really condone a life that you're trying. Uh oh. So like if you have people around you who are not going in the same direction as the father. Towards the father as you are. Then he may isolate you for a time. But you're never really truly isolated. He's always with you. But best believe God shows up through people as well. That's his favorite way to show up. He made us in his image, right? And God can show up in creation as well, which is going outside, you touching the tree, you feeling the grass, you like actually allowing the sun to kiss your face, like things of that nature. God is moving through all those things as well. He created creation, right? So we can experience him outside and we can be not by ourselves even when we may not have people around us that are going after God and going after Christ the way that we are for a time. Just know that if you don't have community now, you will have it eventually. Like God is, he's, he gives us that as believers. He knows how hard it is to live in this world that we live in and that we need each other, that we need people to be his hands and feet, his arms to give us hugs when we need a shoulder to cry on, all those things. Like he provides us with that. And even for us, like we went through seasons where we didn't have like a community of people that we could really talk to about where we're at spiritually or grow with, do life with, and be on the same page for real. But eventually we kept that, you know, kept trying to grow, kept doing what God told us to do, being obedient in our walks and growing and healing and walking away from things that no longer were, not even no longer, were never what God wanted us to do, but we just got you know hooked on because of the way we grew up and things like that and once we started um on that journey god brought us people that would support us through those things and vice versa like he's not going to bring people in your life that are going to pull you away from him he loves you too much for that how many of you are going to a local church or part of a local church what does that look like for you if you are watching, you know, pastors online, if that's your thing, we did that for a long time. We still do that. We just don't use that as our main source of study or understanding and growth. Um, it did help us for a time. And now we more so utilize it as like supplemental content just to like have something to um consume that's not of the world essentially you know give or take depending on who you're watching these days it's a lot it's a lot going on out there okay especially on the internet with people and what they think is bible what they think is spiritually correct spiritually sound and you know for us we don't agree with everything that everybody says we don't agree with all the things that um, and that's why now more than ever, you have to make sure that you are doing your own study, that you have your own intimate group of people that you can discuss things with and share things with and gain insight from. And also, you know, 
the good thing about community too is the Holy Spirit is going to speak through people only affirming what the Holy Spirit has already told you in your heart. So a lot of times when we are unsure if we heard the Holy Spirit right on something, somebody in our community can probably confirm to us. Like, yeah, that is God. Like, that's what he's saying, because that's what I felt the Holy Spirit tell me for you as well. You know, and like having that in your circle is so key, so crucial. And I never would have thought that that would be what friendship could in, like be about. Like friendship to me before was just about convenience and, you know, same interests or same situation or trauma bonding or whatever. Right. But like when you have true friendship in Christ like you have the ability to actually help each other in a way that's so beyond the physical and to grow together and commune with one another in such a way that is so much more than just like we're friends because we're in the same class or we work at the same place. You know what I mean? So much deeper and so much more intimate. And there's a fullness there that you get when you are with your people. And I love that about this season of our lives is that God has allowed us the space to nurture close relationship with multiple different families that have like kids, our same kids ages. And so we get to do things together that are just fun and wholesome and not just, you know, out of pocket. And like also like a situation where like, you don't know what you're gonna get you know, when you see these people or when you go this place or whatever, like we're all on the same time. And that is so, so helpful and such a relief in this day and age. And MJ, no. MJ. MJ. Step and swing. <laughs> morning y'all how's it going i am getting ready to blow my hair out because we're gonna go get braided up today i'm so excited as aren't we all whenever we're about to get our hair done i'm just taking emory with me which i already know so rye's gonna feel the type of way because she's used to going everywhere with me especially if i'm bringing emory too She's going to have a little fit, but we'll get through it. She will be okay. I'm honestly trying to decide if I want to do lashes this week or not. Because I don't know. I just love whenever I have braids and lashes at the same time. It just makes me feel like very put together without doing like anything. Very minimal effort. I did my nails last night, if y'all can see. Very basic, very, very basic. I'm really into builder gel right now. So I've been playing with builder gel lately and it's been working for me. Like I really love that I figured out how to do my own nails and my own toes at home because that's always the struggle postpartum is I be in the house for months. And I can't keep, especially my toes up and my nails up. And so now I've found like what works for me. And I've been doing my own nails at home for like the past uh, almost year at this point. And so I think like 
as 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 minimal as it may be, worrying about my nails and my toes is one less thing on my plate. And it makes a difference. Mark is out making breakfast for the kids and for me too. So I'm gonna go eat and then get Emery ready. I mean, it's over, it's only nine. I need to leave here by noon to get there on time. So I'm gonna blow my hair out now. It doesn't have anything in it currently. I just need to, I washed it last night. I just need to get my, oh, I need to get my brush, shoot. This is the heat protection I'm using today, which is the Hot Commodity Heat Protection from Taraji P. Henson, TPH Hair Care Line. Did y'all see that post where the girl was showing on the piece of paper how well different heat protections, heat protectants actually work on your hair? This was the one that did the best. Well, one of the best out of all of them. I was honestly shocked. I'm gonna try to find that post and screen record it here for y'all because that was crazy how like cheaper heat protectants like that one outperformed expensive ones. So I wanted to show you all real quick how I'm putting this little book together. It came with all of these things and now I'm gonna prep the book for the kids to be able to play with it or to use it. So it comes with these stickers here. So these are like Velcro stickers and throughout the book, there are these little gray circles on each of the parts. And so I'm going in first with these hook yeah, stickers. Yeah, a lot of stuff down here. But right now I'm doing this. Uh, uh huh. Of I'm, the days of the week. Yes, you're writing your days of the week words. So, as you can see here, there's gray circles, I and I'm gonna stick do these. He is. I'm gonna stick these on here so that we can put this part, the Velcro part, onto the actual pieces that go here. Yes, baby. Yeah. Okay. No. So, Micah, here you're gonna do this one. The this one is the Grooved Handwriting Practice Workbook Numbers and Shapes. Okay? So, Michael, you yes, have to shapes. put the yellow okay. thing. You have to put the blue thing in, in yep. here. Like two, not yep. a lot. And, yep. then, and then you just need a draw. Yep, and you're going to draw. those are like crazy. And you're going to do this. Like, you see how cool that is? Wow. It's going to help you learn how to write, baby. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so you do it. No, you got to use this one. You gotta use this one, look. Look. Let's do these ones, okay? Look. Well, those Here, are take good this one. For you. Put your finger in there. You know how to do it. Good job, Micah. No, no, just there you do go. It like a circle. Yep. And the other. You, here, go like this. You trace it. See? Trace it. And then it See, just goes like away. Yep. Like it then it See? just goes away. And you away. do it like this, okay? And then like it dies away. Like this. Circle. Micah, look, mine is flying away. Yeah. See? You try, Micah. 
I can Micah, you try. Here. You try. I can't try it. You can try it. Mm. Wait, hold on. You gotta wait for that one. That one's for this book. We're not ready for that one yet, but you do that one, okay? Not like that. Like this. Okay? Like this. Like this. Like that, okay? Like this. Good job, Micah. You got it. What the? Oh, man. That's okay. That's all right. What could happen? It's okay. What could happen to this, Micah? You can try again. What could happen? Yeah. It dried away. Yeah. Why did it do that? It does that so you can practice and have a clean paper each time. Oh. Yeah. Isn't what that cool? Heck? Keep oh. trying, Micah. Dog. I don't know how to do this. Let me do Aren't hey. you excited, Sarai, for your ballet class? Mm -hmm. Sarai is going to her first dance class tomorrow. We are testing out a new place because Sarai has been wanting to dance for so long. And I finally found a place that I think is going to be so great for her. So tomorrow is the big day where we're gonna go try out a class and see how we like it, right? Yeah, and if I don't like it, give her a chance. Yeah, if she, no, if she doesn't like it, then we'll just find something else oh, to do. I know. But especially R -E -D because we're starting. Red, e -D oh, good job. Red. That's right, R-E-D, red. But obviously with them starting homeschool, I wanted to find other ways for them to get social time with other kids and just get direction from different adults and things like that. And so for Sarai, she's been showing so much interest in dance for a long time. And so this was kind of a natural progression for us to find a dance company for her to join and just do for fun and not do anything too serious. I know, baby, I'm almost ready for this. Uh, but do something that'll Mama help her look. just grow in that area. Done. Good job, baby. Do you want to do another one? Mm, no, I want to do that one now. All right. Well, you can do that one until I'm finished with this one because I'm still working on this one. Aww. I know. It's kind of taken me a long time. Longer than I expected. <laughs> I love the cool thing about this one about this book is that it also has like dry erase on this side of the book so all the pages on this side let you use like these type of markers and then all the on this side is where all the velcro pieces are well i know how to do everything you know how to do everything mm -hmm. oh my goodness but my teacher my teacher so now we need to see how to do Wait, these are other stuff. These are ones and two. Yep, they're these ones like, and two. So those those are going to help us practice our numbers. So, so these are going to do it like this. Like that. <laughs> like what, girl? Like, they're going to do two. Wait, what's the left? What's the, uh? Wait, don't touch those yet because I got to put the back piece on them still. Oh. Yeah, oh, these are the, the names. Piece. These are the names. Yeah, those are days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week. Yeah, that's what those are. And yeah, hold on, baby. Just wait. Be patient. I'm almost done. No, these are the colors. What are those colors? Can you tell me the colors? Red. Good job. Well, you we can't see them. So. Oh so yeah, open. we gotta open them. I can open them for you. Green. That's green. That's correct. Same time. Blue. Blue, that's uh, correct. Mom, I don't have to do that. You had to put the dark blue over there. Yep, you match them, right? I like this. This is cool. Did you get it? Yeah, um, I got it. TikTok dinosaur. made me buy it. <laughs> what? Why TikTok you? made me buy it. Why? I saw it on TikTok. Why? Because other moms said that their kids liked them, so I said... Oh, if their kids because like them, my kids will probably stuff. like them. Yeah. Wait, look. And yeah. it also gives you this little baggie, too, to keep stuff in there as well. So that's nice. Yeah.
Uh, <laughs> I only follow it like that. You put your, you put your pencil out to dot and follow it. There you go. Guess what? I have one of these color books at, at, at my class, and, and, and they just need to shake them, and, and then they be all over. Uh oh. That's how you have to do it. Is there no way we could combine the more structured learning with a sense of wonder, questioning awe? This is a challenge in science teaching. It should be accurate and good, leaving the person with a sure grasp of reality so that he is more likely to think for himself and not to feel vulnerable and weak when the experts pontificate. He should know that the ordinary citizen need not hand over decisions to the experts, as if he had no mind or responsibility. I believe that this is vital in the coming generation. We can easily be intimidated by experts. Let the children know enough so that they will think for themselves. Other teenagers will obviously benefit from a full study of all the scientific branches. So, uh, is, uh, oh, uh, what is that? Their food. How do you feel, Mama? You ready to do your first dance class? Yes! <laughs> Are you excited? Okay, so we're going to do a trial today. We're going to see how we like it. And if we like it, then we'll come back. Okay. Okay? All right. You ready? Let's go, girl. Sometimes you need to just come outside, take a break from being indoors, and breathe for a second. Sometimes I feel guilty for being super, super stressed out or touched out after only being with my kids for a few hours. Like I'm with them every day, but there's moments and stints where I may be with four kids by myself or even if like my sister is around, if she's off doing something or whatever, or even if it's just like today where I'm my husband has gone out the house and Emery, who is sleeping right here right now, just won't go to sleep without being on me. You know, a lot of days I can manage, you know, multitasking, doing multiple things at the same time, trying to be as efficient as possible. But today I tried to do Sarai's hair three different times. And each time I had to stop and go to Emery and pick her up, soothe her, get her back to sleep. And once I get her to sleep and I transfer her from me to the bed or her basket or her bassinet or her crib or whatever, I get like 10 minutes and then she's crying it up again. And so... It was like that tension between what you're being called to do, which is tend to your child, and what you want to do or plan to do, which is for me today, was do my other daughter's hair and get that checked off my list, you know, of things in my brain that need to happen before next week when we go on our trip. But that tension, that drives me crazy. 
Like that tension is what be pushing people over the edge. Because if you don't notice the tension, you'll just start popping off on everybody and you'll start walking around with so much anger and frustration and not be able to release it because you're still not realizing that the tension is there and that's what's triggering your frustration and triggering your anxiety and triggering all, you know all of those emotions and that tension pops up subtly throughout your day and sometimes you have days where it's there more than others and today was a day that I felt that tension more than others. And I was snapping at Sarai and, you know, snap, just, 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 just doing everything I could not to snap on everybody. Cause I could tell like when I snapped on Sarai, I was going to snap on everybody else. And so I had to just like back up and come outside and just like breathe for a second because there is no time off as a mom. Yes, we can get little breaks here and there, but you, you never really release the responsibility of motherhood even if your kids aren't around. And one of the things that I have a goal of is to not be a stressed out mom. I don't want to be a stressed out mom. I just don't subscribe to the idea that motherhood equals being stressed out and that being the identity of my motherhood journey or me as a mom and those things being synonymous or the same because a lot of times we think that way. We attach stress with the role of being a mom or a parent. and. That's something that we can control. Like, we don't have to fit that narrative. But if we don't want to fit that narrative, then what are we doing to not have that be our reality? Because the thing is, the diapers are still going to pile up. The food is still going to be on the floor. The kids are still going to mess up everything after you just cleaned it up. I, all those things are still going to happen. And how do you go through life, go through your day to day in a very practical way without those things stressing you the hell out? Because that's how I feel today. I'm stressed. And it's not like anything major happened, but it's like that tension that I was just talking about that tension between what I'm being called to do in the moment from my children or from my home or whatever and what I planned on doing or was in the middle of doing. What do I choose? And when you're choosing the thing that isn't a priority, the tension lingers and the tension grows, whether you acknowledge it or not. And what I've really worked on doing is recognizing when the tension is there and releasing the thing that I'm not called to. Recognizing what, am, what, what are the two sides here? Because I was just talking to Mark and I, I wanted to keep my mouth shut. I wanted to hold the tension in, keep pushing, keep going, you know, all the things that people tell you to do. Just keep going, keep moving, keep on trucking, you know, all the things. And in the moment, I just, let that go. And I said, I'm going to do the opposite thing. And for me, the opposite thing that I wanted to do was speak up about how I was feeling and open up my frustration in that moment. And so I told Mark, I said, I'm just feeling frustrated. Like I keep trying to do Sarai's hair and I can't get it done. Like I keep getting pulled away, you know, because Emery's just being like extra fussy today and like extra clingy today. And I'm just like irritated. And he was like, well, maybe you don't do her hair. Just save it for another time. And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm just not gonna do her hair. 
and it'll be okay. I'll just have to. And in the back of my mind, you know, the other piece of it is Sarai had been not nagging. I want to say nagging. I won't say nagging. She had been asking me over and over to do her hair all day today. And every time we had to start and stop, it was like I felt like I was letting her down again and again and again. So sometimes it's hard between, you know, you have multiple kids and they all want something different from you at the same time. Who do you choose? Like two things that you're called to are pulling you, you know? And I had to look at the situation and say, even though I want to get the hair done and I really want to knock that off my list of things to do, it's really not a priority. She will be fine if her hair doesn't get done today, you know? And I had to tell that to Sarai. And I was honest with Sarai. She's about to be five. And I talked to her like I respect her and like I appreciate her understanding and things. And so I told her, I said, Mama, we're going to have to do your hair tomorrow because I keep getting pulled away and I'm stressed out. And I just need to do that tomorrow. And she said, OK, Mommy, but can I get on the iPad? for a little bit and I said yes you can go ahead and get on the iPad for a little bit because that's really why she likes getting her hair done is because she doesn't get on the phone or the iPad really at any other point unless we're doing hair because that's how we balance like screen time but also how I can get her to sit still for you know three to four hours at a time between washing her hair blowing it out braiding it all the things and so I told her honestly like I I just can't today and I let her still use the iPad even though we weren't doing hair and that's what she's doing right now her two brothers are sleeping in their rooms taking naps and this one is sleeping right here at this point do I wish Emery was in her own bassinet right now sleeping instead of on me yes do I wish Sarai wasn't on the iPad and instead doing something that didn't have a screen on it? Yes. But am I taking hold of my peace and doing the thing that is better for me mentally so that I can be a functioning, happy, joyful mom instead of a stressed out mom for the rest of the day by coming out here taking a breath for a second yes I'm choosing that I have a thousand other things I could be doing right now but instead I came out here I'm talking to y'all in this vent session which is like therapy for me and I'm getting out what was being built up and feeling like tension in my body stress in my body because I don't want to be a stressed out mom I do not want my kids to remember me as a stressed out mom and if i don't want that to be my reality in the future then there are decisions i have to make today that change that narrative because motherhood and stress are not synonymous stress does not have to be the dominant factor in my motherhood journey these are things that i tell myself (laughs) these are things that i tell myself because the truth is Children are a gift from the Lord. These kids belong to him. I am simply raising them up in the way that they should go towards him to my best ability until they are grown and they make their own choices and they do their own thing. That's it. I have to release the the habit in me to want to control everything and hold them not so tightly but loose enough for God to parent with me, for the Holy Spirit to parent with me so that I can be a mom that exhibits joy and peace and comfort and patience. So my children grow up feeling like patience is synonymous with motherhood, that joy is synonymous with motherhood. Those are the beliefs that I want to instill in them. 
And those are the beliefs that I want to instill in me. I've got to do it first, though. I've got to do it first, and then they will see and believe what they choose. But they will see joy on me. They will see peace on me. They will see comfort and patience on me. So I have to make decisions every day that get me there, that bring me back from a place of frustration, that tension, the stress of, of day-to-day life, I the worry, okay, the worry of everyday life, the anxiety. I have to do what I need to do to come out of those emotions and feelings and to come back into the fruits of the Spirit where I want to live and where I want to be continuously. But it's not easy. It's not. My body, like my nervous system is still kind of (laughs) raging right now. Like I feel it in my body. I feel my anxiety still pushing me. Adrenaline pushing me because it's just, you know, got to clean up the poop that just came out the diaper. Got to, you know, get the baby that's crying. Got to get the juice, you know, for the other kid that's crying for something to drink. And then you got to, it's just always so much. So in moments when I can just take a breath, I do my best to do just that. And I hope this encourages you to do the same thing whenever you need it. And don't think whatever is stressing you out is too small for you to take a step away and breathe. Because to some people, doing hair is a very small thing. But small things are the ones that sneak up on you and blow up and make you act like a crazy person. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Whenever you feel that tension, that's that's me. This is for me. Whenever I feel that tension of pulling in different directions and I can only choose one thing, but I'm trying to do both or I'm trying to do something that is not as important as the other thing, quickly realizing what needs to be released so that the other one can prevail. And my prayer always is that God's will be the thing that prevails each time. That I have the wisdom and the discernment to know which one is God's will for me in every moment, in every decision possible.